Okay, here we go. This is uh, Steve Struggle and Dr. Abraham Weisfeld uh, here speaking to you on our weekly broadcast of Here and Now. In this week's uh, broadcast, we are introducing Ahmed Hi. from Palestine. And uh, this is a, an opportunity for us to uh, have a conference between a Palestinian militant, a Black Panther, and a Jewish uh, anti-Zionist uh, Bundist. Uh, this is a first ever. And uh, here we go. Now, uh, Ahmed, you know, looked at our last uh, video broadcast, and uh, he had some comments to make to me, you know, because, uh, you know, I was uh, discussing the, uh, the issues there, you know, from uh, uh, as an internal sort of, you know, analysis, but uh, Ahmed, you know, will discuss it, you know, from an, a Palestinian perspective, and uh, and then we can okay. go there. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, it's nice to meet you, uh, uh, comrade. Nice to meet you too. Welcome. Welcome to you too. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be short for me because my daughter is coming from out of town to see me. So uh, I didn't know we didn't know that it's going to be long to get uh, connected. But anyway, I could. Uh, you know, uh, say my idea, my uh, what I I want to say about what's going on inside the Zionist entity. I I always refrain Please. refrain Please from using the word Israel. I don't believe in that thing. I call it the Zionist entity. Um, to me, as a Palestinian and most of Palestinians, I would say the vast majority of Palestinians. Uh, what's going on inside the Zionist entity of of strifes, a strife uh, uh, against the, the 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 laws to change uh, the access of the Supreme Court to the to the Zionist law, their so-called Knesset. Uh, it's it's a we see it between colonists among themselves. Fighting to, between uh, one side who wants to preserve uh, the Zionist state as Western social democratic uh, uh, entity as part of the West, whereas the other side who wants to take it to the other side, which is more autocratic and uh, dictatorial and authoritarian uh, uh, model. So as far as, as the Palestinian concern within inside so-called Israel or who lives on the West Bank as this has nothing to do with us. We have nothing. We have no stake on it. And calling uh, uh, the so-called opposition to um, make room for us is kind of something is, is nostalgic or... Uh, it's naive. naive, very naive, to because these people, these people, when they make their speeches and they make their, uh, um, you know, expose in, uh, in the podiums, they're talking about how how Zionists they are and how murderers they are and how much they are protecting Israel from the Palestinian terrorism. So they are competing among each other who is more fascist and who's more murderers. So uh, to us. We have nothing to do with it. It's it's a fight within themselves. It's good for us to see them weakening as a colonial white establishment on our land, but we have nothing to do with it. Uh, I am I'm gonna I'm sorry. I have to go. My daughter is here. I haven't seen her for about three years. So uh, it's very nice to see you. But definitely next week, I will spend more time. You, I'll have all my time with you guys. To discuss it this Good. Saturday. Uh, thank you, Good. Steve, for your time and uh, perseverance with me. Well, well thank Bye. you for being here. I, I I really cherish the opportunity to talk to an on the ground Palestinian militant. Because many things I would like to ask questions and draw some lessons from you. So I look forward to our next chat. Absolutely, it's my it's always my pleasure to connect with my brothers in in the revolution. Take care. Thank you very much. All right. Solidarity. I'll, I'll give uh, Dr. Abraham uh, the, the podium. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that was a good introduction. I, the reason I'm interested in this dialogue 
is I think that, okay, there has been a fundamental shift in analysis of what's happening with the Black people in the United States. All of our democratic rights have been tied into law, policy, and Supreme Court rulings. And we've seen the last few years, laws, policies, Supreme Court rulings have been used against us consistently with no let up. And I am, on the, I am under the analysis that African Americans, Black Americans should learn from our Palestinian brothers and sisters in Israel who I think are in a very similar situation. The difference particulars, but overall same type of colonial oppression by an oppressor government backed up by, by racism, discrimination, and historical oppression. So I'm very happy to open up this dialogue. I think it's very important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll continue with Ahmed uh, in the next week's uh, broadcast. Mm. Very good. Um, I am uh, planning myself to uh, go back to Palestine. Oh. And uh, I want to uh, settle my uh, affairs in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, where there's nothing, no sort of avenue for me to be able to uh, advance, you know? It's just repression after repression and uh, right. lack of, uh, lack of uh, solidarity, you know, from the existing um, uh, socialist currents. Well, not the Maoists. The Maoists, they've always, you know, welcomed me to come and speak, even, you know, when I first published my book on Sabra Shatila. But uh, the, uh, the other, uh, the provincial uh, political party that uh, is basically socialist that has 10 seats in the National Assembly now, I got expelled there, you know, because they parachuted a candidate in against me. Uh, who was an uh, anti-Semite who thought that the, the Jews don't count, you know, and she said so. <laughs> so I ran against her and I got expelled, you know, so then never, you know, could I work with that party again, you know. So, right, and, right. and then, you know, to find, and then we have, you know, a cultural center, you know, but to find other socialists to work together, you know, like, doesn't happen. Not amongst the artists, not amongst uh, the cooks, you know. The current cook, you know, thinks that she's operating a business. Has no, even though she was educated under communist <laughs> Hungary uh, rule, and she's a refugee herself, a Roma. Uh, and uh, you know, like I'm giving up on the project there in Montreal. You know, I have to get back to Palestine where I can do some real work. And, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's why I'm here. You know, talking with Ahmed in, in Ottawa. No. Right. What's happening, and plus, you know, what's happening to me, you know, like just for writing and a free Palestine on a uh, Israel Day parade poster, you know, I'm getting charged. Right. Uh, I saw hate, that. Hate crime police, you know, who are charging me under the criminal code of Canada with uh, criminal mischief uh, under 5,000. Okay. So that's, that's incredible. That's just, subjects, that's just incredible. Yeah. And, and I'm subject to uh, two years imprisonment, you know, if I get convicted. So, you know, like, and I don't trust any lawyer to defend me, you know, because they, they don't have the courage, you know, to do the job. So uh, I'm, uh, my first uh, court hearing is uh, the 21st of August. And I'm going to move to dismiss the charge, you know, because the bloody poster, you know, like is worth $2 and one cent. I got this information from the, uh, the evidence, you know, that I picked up from the police because I'm defending myself. Found out the name of the person who, was, who charged me. Who, uh, who filed the complaint with the police, who was trying to remain anonymous, who identifies herself in the papers as a security agent for the Zionist lobby, the uh, Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, they call themselves. And, you know, she's working in the library as a library technician, you know, but she's a security agent for the Zionist lobby, you know, like, you know, like what, what's going on here? So it seems um, to me this case needs to be dismissed. So this, this is not even worth the time of the court to waste its energy on you writing some, someone wanted to have a political this is a political persecution there's nothing you've done you yeah. write something on a, on a document which to me like it or not is free speech you yeah. have not you have not detract you have not prevented the, the event from occurring you have exposed no violence you to me have made a comment about what's happening on this event yeah. So to me, for it even to go to trial, to even 
beyond the initial hearing, it should be dropped. There's no, there's no basis for the court to waste its time to find you, to threaten you with imprisonment and possible deportation over this nonsense. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah, possible imprisonment. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, they're serious, nonetheless, even though it's ridiculous. They're very serious. And uh, there was a second thing that happened. It was not only the... Uh, the, the, not only did the security agent charge me with a hate crime, supposedly, but, you know, she was working in the library. I had given her my book, The Federation of Palestinian Hebrew Nations, to, to deposit in the book and to be into the, entered into the catalog. And she's the one who followed me out, saw me writing, asked security to, to get call the police to have me charged, uh, and asked, you know, to contact the hate crimes division of the police as well. Okay, then she gives the book that I gave to the library. She gives it to the police and says, this book is being rejected by the library, the Jewish public library, a book from a Jewish, you know, uh, academic in Montreal. I don't think there's another Jewish writer in Montreal at this time. You know? And this book, she, without asking the library administration, gave the book to police and the police were supposed to return it to me, you know, because it was supposedly rejected by the library. Okay, so I contacted the library administration and the two, uh, the, the head administrator and the, um, the circulation manager, they had no idea this was happening. They had no idea that the book was rejected, you know, by this agent. So I told the cop this and the cop, uh, I, you know, agreed to take the book back to the library after I asked the cop to threaten whoever it was, you know, with theft, because that's basically what it was. She stole my book <laughs> and so and gave it to the police. So the police were in possession of stolen property, in effect. Okay. So the police agreed, you know, that they couldn't get away with this. And so I won that right away. So the police have taken the book back to the library. And now the book is in, entered into the catalog. And I have four books in the catalog at the Jewish Public Library. So the administration and the administrator that I spoke to, she said, you know, she, she was very sympathetic. And she just, you know, was worried that I had gone too far, you know, and I was putting myself into jeopardy. That's it. That's all. So that book matter is is one already so okay in court, in court uh i'm going to move to dismiss you know i have to contact some lawyers to find out you know how what wording to put on the paper then i have right. to yes exactly exactly yeah, yeah. so then i'm going to move a, you know um, a motion to dismiss you know right away and if that doesn't work then okay fine they want to have a, a you know like a debate in court you know where they have to tell the truth fine you know, I know who it is now, you know, that took the book and made the complaint against me. So I can, um, uh, you know, it, it required that she, that she come to appear as a witness. And then I can ask her, you know, like every, you know, like detail as to, you know, like where, how she thought she can get away with something like this. Not only, you know, charging a second generation Holocaust survivor with a hate crime, an anti-Semitic hate crime. It's just not credible, you know, like, where did she get this from, you know? I, so she says that, you know, because, you know, my writing was anti-Israel, then that means it's automatically anti-Semitic. However, if you look at actually what I wrote, and she didn't even mean look, you know, it says, and a free Palestine. Okay, the word, you know, the symbol for and is there, and refers to two things, you know, one, Israel exists, okay, yeah, okay, it exists. But Palestine should be existing as well, according to, you know, international law and UN, you know, resolutions. You know, in in forty seven, the partition plan said that there should be both an Israel and a Palestine. You know, where's the Palestine? Okay, you know, except for you know one building in Ramallah, you know, it it, it doesn't exist. It's occupied by the military of a, another country. And then, you know, the Oslo interim agreement, you know, agreed that Israel was going to recognize Palestine after five years. It happened. So, and they keep on stealing the land. You know, Ahmed can explain, you know, how they do this. You know, it's incredible. You know, there's all sorts of lands, you know, under various legal categories that are being, you know, stolen. So, uh, you know, like, you know, I can ask, you know, didn't you read, you know, what actually, you know, was written on the poster? You know, it says, and they free Palestine. All she saw and, and quoted to the police was the words free Palestine. And this is considered to be anti-Semitic by the Zionists. You know, no, free Palestine is not anti-Semitic. Free Palestine is free speech. It's advocating the right of an oppressed people for self-determination. It's not against anybody. It's for somebody. 
My my question to you is, who is her attorney going to be? Uh, she doesn't need an attorney because it's the police who are prosecuting me. It's the crown prosecutor, you know, crown, you know, like the crown of England, you know, the king of England's, you know, prosecutor is prosecuting me here. Okay, in so you're saying you're so you're saying that the state is the prosecutor. Yeah. And and she is she is the witness for the state. So the state has to be compelled to drop the charges. Yes. Because if the state allows this case even to go further, Canada will be put in a very precarious situation of not only opposing free speech, but equating criticism of Israeli policy with anti-Semitism. Yeah. Which is nonsense, but yeah. maybe, but maybe they actually, maybe they want to make that stand. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, that's what they think they can get away with. Okay, well, at least she does, you know. And uh, uh, so, you know, this is going to be a case which is going to be a precedent. So the whole Zionist argument everywhere that they use, you know, that criticizing Israel is uh, anti-Semitic. Well, no, you know, okay, this is going to be defeated, and therefore. You know, after this point, you know, when they use that argument again, you know, you know, this can be referred to as a precedent saying, well, the court rejected right. this argument. You know, you can't use that argument anymore. Well, it's gone. You know, it's going to disappear. Are you are you seeking in, in, uh, what kind of international solidarity or local solidarity are, are you seeking and have been able to to uh, to hmm. develop? Yeah, I put out a press release, sent it out to uh, all the Jewish and Canadian and international media. No response from any media outlet. Nobody wants to cover this. Al Jazeera, okay. Al Jazeera hasn't responded to you. I don't. Uh, I, I I don't remember if I have Al Jazeera's uh, uh, email address okay. in the list of media. I should uh, check on that. But the yeah, uh, press Al -Jazeera, release. Uh, yeah. What about um, what about Russia Jason Today, Press Angulia. TV? Yeah, all of those. You know, like uh, that should be yeah, answering. Right. Right. Oh, press, oh. press TV, Russia Today should be covering this. They should be on this. Yeah. Um, what about what about uh, Jason's program? Uh, Jason, Jason has already made a video. Yeah, he's made a video in solidarity. Good. So have uh, about good. three or Very four good. other uh, comrades as well. Very good statements okay, good. initially. You know, like outrage. Good. Okay. Very good. Very outrage. good. That's, that's very important. And then okay. I got a um, a, a militant, a Jewish militant from. Uh, uh, from 48 Palestine, she responded, and uh, she's uh, uh, expressed her solidarity and will continue to do so. There's also the Jewish uh, anti-Zionist comrade in Berlin, who has uh, responded. But I haven't even gotten, you know, like a, you know, any sort of you know statements from uh, Canadian, you know, Jewish uh, anti-Zionist organizations, like the the one that ripped off, you know, my uh, my <laughs> my conference that I organized in 2000. And eight of the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians, and uh, they they uh, ripped off the the whole organization, uh, uh, changed the name, cha uh, invented their own name, and uh, expelled me. <laughs> and they're not you know expressing okay. any solidarity well, with me either. You know, so it's really you know like poor, very poor you know you know sort of a level is, of so solidarity. Is, um, I guess. Another question I have for you, as far as your your defense campaign, um, what would you like people who have solidarity with you to do, who are not in Canada, who are not in, who are not there, but they live somewhere else and they can do something to hmm. bring your cause known to the public or advocate against what's happening to you to a Canadian embassy or wh whatever, whoever. How hmm. do you, how would they? How would you want them to respond? Hmm. Yeah, right on. Um, if it goes to trial, uh, uh, what I would ask uh, other uh, organizations and individuals to do is to uh, write a statement, you know, a letter, and uh, send it to me uh, with uh, their, uh, you know, appropriate information, uh, who they are, where they are, and why they're, you know, like uh, speaking out. And then I can deposit it as evidence to the court, you know, so the judge can see this. Also, I have to okay. find out if I can get a jury trial. If I can get a jury trial, then it'll be much better, you know, because if it's just a judge, you know, municipal court, if it's just a judge and they get to choose the judge, you know, the, the prosecutors, you know, the, the crown. Right, you know. right, right, right. The prosecutor will choose a judge that they think will, the prosecutor will try to get, get the court, get a judge that's going to rule in their favor. That's right. You're exactly right. Yep. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah sure. So, so um, why don't we, why don't, um, okay, what, what I need you to do, Ibrahim, uh, 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 is to send me an update on the on your situation so I can circulate the facts among people I know. Mm -hmm. um, because, and the date of your hearing, mm -hmm. this kind of thing, because I, I want my network to know about this, this situation and to spread it among their networks, we can at least create a create a solidarity network for you. Yes, I mean, I could even deposit these statements, you know, on the twenty first, you know, asking for the the, the charge uh, to be dismissed. Yes, exactly, so, exactly, exactly. We need to get all the help we can we, yeah. for this first hearing. This is dropped. This is ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely absurd. You know. Mm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm willing to do. And I would, I would encourage everybody who's listening, to, who's watching this program, everybody who's hearing these words to reach out, to get involved, to spread the word and to let every, let Canada know that the world is watching. We're not just going to let uh, Abraham be railroaded and harassed because of his, his advocacy for liberation for, for the Palestinians and for the liberation of all of, of humanity. We have to stand with Abraham. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, like when I was called in by the police, you know, to uh, receive the charge, you know, the first thing <clears> that the police <throat> did was they locked the door on the room. Okay. So I was under detention already. I was like arrested and detained. Right. And uh, they gave me this paper to sign, you know, saying that I, I would promise not that I would promise to appear and that I would promise not to go back to the Jewish community center. And, uh, and then you released me on my own reconnaissance uh, after I signed that. So I have to get that uh, limitation removed by the judge as well on the 21st, saying that I wouldn't go back to the Jewish Community Center because, you know, the, on the 21st of September, there's a general annual meeting of the uh, Holocaust Museum. And I'm going to go, you know, and I'm going to tell the judge that I'm going to go and I want him to lift that limitation. And if he doesn't leave, lift the limitation, I'm going to go anyway. And if they want to arrest me... <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can arrest, you know, second generation Holocaust survivor who's going to a Holocaust museum, you know, annual general meeting, you know, okay. <laughs> and, but, you know, I had to sort of sign the paper in order to get out, in order to organize my defense, first of all, right. because, yeah, you know, yeah, I was totally yeah, right. isolated. That, yeah, that's just a concession. That, 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 yeah, that, that's just a concession we make in our tactical, a tactical maneuver we have to make. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Okay, so I need a written statements to present to the judge if it becomes difficult. Now, uh, people can send such a statement to, uh, and preferably, you know, in the name of an organization, uh, and uh, send it to uh, my email address, which I will announce here. S-A-A-L-A-H-A, -A circle A, F-O-K-U-S dot N-A-M-E. It's a generic email address. So statements can go there, and then I can present it to the judge. Okay. May I suggest that when you when you do your editing of this program, that you find a way to put a card in that has that information on it? Oh, I can put it into the, the description of the video on YouTube. Right. right. Is that, exactly. Is that, yeah. yeah. Okay. You can put a description. Also, if you want, you actually put a card on the screen that will show the information that will show your name and everything okay yeah. you address everything just that's what i was just that way people when they hear it they'll see it right there find out where where you're talking for the, the time you're talking insert the card right there for about two minutes and that way they can see it right down to okay so in the description as well as the card that's that's why that's why I, i'm i can't hear you right now So, okay. So um, I think for me, I, I'm, I, I'm just ceding my time to you and your situation. I think we have to work on this and, and you know, get a solidarity going. Okay. So I will do it. And, and, and as soon as you give me the information, and I see the description. I will circulate that among people that I know. Okay. I'm going to be putting out a second press release for the uh, 21st, uh, announcing that uh, the the, the, the cens censorship of the book has been defeated, announcing that first initial victory and then uh, 
explain, you know, what's coming up and and then asking for the uh, statements of solidarity. Yeah. Okay. I'll put out a press release to that effect this coming week. Very good. That sounds good. That sounds, that sounds good. And just keep me informed what's going on. You can call me every day, every other day, send me email messages. I definitely am going to do what I can to help build, build, build this campaign with, okay. with you. Cause I, I, I think we can't, we can't allow our activists just to be harassed and degraded and, and pushed around by yeah. by our our class enemies. No, yeah. no, we, have, we, we we you know we have, we have to fight back. Okay, good. Okay, uh, so what's happening in uh, in your area? What's happening with you? Well, at, at this point, um, I have nothing new to report. I'm focusing. Well, two things. One is it is um, this. It is Hiroshima day to day, a yeah. uh, very sad day in in the history of humanity. Um, this movie Oppenheimer mm -hmm. has been released. Can't hear you now. Okay. Also, we have the situation in, um, well, let, let, let me go back to Oppenheimer and, um, Hiroshima Day. There's nothing to celebrate about mass murder using by weapons of mass destruction. Mm. Period. And while people have argued that the reason that the bombs were dropped was to put fear into Ru into Russia, the former ally in World War II, I still maintain. It was an act of racial domination of white America over Asian Japan. And I, and I will keep that as my view. Not that it, the bomb could not be used against other people, but it has not been used against anybody else. It's only been used against Japan. Yeah. When, it, yeah. when the bomb is used against whites, and I will withdraw my, my argument, it was a racial attack by white superior government, white superior nation over a non-white nation. Yeah. Who they're fighting for. And that's how I see it. Chemical biological weapons used specifically on civilians. On civilians. Yeah. A civilian city. It wasn't even, you know, manufacturing city. Right. So it was clearly designed as mass racial, mass ethnic war. That's what it was done. That, that's why they did it. Yeah. And and to, and to this day, there's never been an apology, nor, as I understand, any reparations. That demand still is on the table. When you have, it's in the same way that Oppenheimer movie has has un, has uncovered that the that the Congolese were working to mine the uranium to build the bomb, work with no kind of safety precautions at all, none. So they had to die from leukemia and all kind of horrific diseases, never even considered. Hmm. Again, so so they take the they take the they take the raw materials from a non-white nation to bomb a non-white nation. And hmm. I hate to say it on racial terms, but sometimes the way that the capitalists and imperialists operate in this world, it's on racial terms. Hmm. We're gonna keep the darkies and the and the yellow people in their place. <laughs> we'll take it from the from the black man. We'll take his minerals and contaminate his his people. Then we're going to bomb the bomb bomb the Asian people and, and keep them in fear. And for our reparations, how dare you even ask such a thing? So I know that's not a politically correct way of looking at it, but that's how I see it historically, and that's how they do it. Yeah. So now, that's how today. Huh. Yeah. This is a a genocidal policy, you know, which continues yes. The, yes. the founding policy of the United States of America was genocide of the uh, indigenous nations in North yeah, America. I mean, so they, I mean they, you know, even though a complete genocide was not committed, partial genocide was committed. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, if not, they could not have taken over the land and just push, push people aside. So that's what's happened with me. That's the thing. I, I, I That's all I want to talk about today is Hiroshima Day. There's nothing to celebrate. There should be, there should be strikes. There should be picket lines. There should be demonstration attacking, opposing, denouncing what happened, calling for reparations, calling for friendship between the United States, people of the United States, and people of Japan, because basically 
that murder was carried out in our name. Yeah. And that's nonsense. That's nonsense. We do not support mass murder using chemical and biological weapons. It didn't it did not have to happen. And the movie Oppenheimer is interesting. It's been released right around this period. Because now we're seeing the role, unfortunately, of the Communist Party of the United States. And in, in the alliance with with the Communist Party of the Soviet Union to to create the bomb, mm-hmm. that bomb should not have been created. No, just 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 that. No, I am not going to do that. Walk away from the project. The Oppenheimer was thrown on on on, on under the bus after after, after World War Two. So if say he would have participated, they're going to make the bomb anyway, and they're going to throw him throw him under the bus anyway. So why I just say, just say no from the from, from, from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Walk away from walk away from stuff that's wrong. You don't yeah. have to participate in something. If, if your party says do it, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm walking away from it because it's bad for humanity. It's just going to be mass murder. Just yeah. say no. It's easy. Yeah. Just say no. Yeah. You don't have to do this stuff. No, you don't. L- leave it alone, man. Just yeah. say no. Nah, I'm, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, Oppen- and, and, Oppenheimer, and, and, he was manipulated. You know, like such a naive. You know, scientist. Yes. Yes. But he thought that, that yes, you know, like he was trying to develop a nuclear bomb for the U.S. before, you know, Nazi Germany would develop a bomb. But Nazi Germany wasn't developing a bomb. They they lost out on the heavy water in Nor- Norway, you know, that was, you know, sabotaged. And they also didn't uh, agree with Einstein's, you know, like uh, <laughs> theories, you know, like because they called it Jewish physics, you know, so they didn't believe, you know, that it was true. <laughs> right. Okay, so you know, Oppenheimer had no idea that it was going to be used against Japan, and then I've seen the figure of four hundred thousand deaths, probably both you know Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but you know four hundred thousand, you know, it's probably half a million people right there, you know, right away, you know, like for no reason, you know, when, you know Japan was even willing to negotiate its surrender, you know, at that point, and uh, of course and they, they were, were. of yeah. course they were, they see their. Some countries have the sense to negotiate surrender. Mm-hmm. Right now in Ukraine, with the Ukrainian fashion of the United States, they don't have the sense yet to surrender. No. And all their boys are being killed. Husbands, sons, cousins, nephews, uncles, dead. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. time for them to stop that war, so even to maintain their own just uh, national identity. But they won't surrender. The Japanese say, "Look, dude, we can, you know, let's let's talk about this. This this, this, this ain't working." They had some sense. Yeah. They knew what was going on. So, and the United States didn't want to surrender. They wanted to massacre them, and that's why I say it was genocide with a racial and ethnic, racial and ethnic um, basis. Yeah. And I'm 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 not going to stop saying that because somehow this needs to be recognized as a, a deliberate attempt to destroy a population, a civilian population, by um, a far superior military power. power. And the Oppenheimer Project, I mean, the, the Manhattan Project was simply a way of carrying out mass murder, period. So that's that's all I got to say about it, man. That's it. Well, we don't have much time left in this broadcast, but the United States that's has- That's okay, bro. That's good. And, you know, even Biden has, when he visited Hiroshima, he refused to apologize, you know, like- Refuse, refuse, no. Mm-hmm. Could, no, no one in Congress will even, will even put a bill on the. Will, 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 where where's the squad? Hey squad, where's your bill, squad? Yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on, I mean, show that you have some courage, even if you know it's not going to get get nowhere. Anyway, that's it for me. Yeah. So okay. next time. Okay, so next week we're gonna meet again with Ahmed. You know, we're gonna get you know some. He knows, you know, like what he knows is not covered, you know, like we've got to give him a voice. You know, this is very important. Great. Well, this is his voice right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Bye for now.